to throw at y'all before we uh, really start classes and stuff like that. Uh, first off, uh, this year we decided to videotape the class lecture because uh, we have this ad drop policy that's um, you know different. Uh, there are times in the year where I'll actually have like three weeks into class, people will join the, the, the class. And in this class, like the first lecture, it's not like skip class from here on in, but the first class is actually where a lot of content is. And uh, I rather, you know, so hooray, you're going to get bored to death today. Um, but after that, um, you know, it, it's a lot harder to go back for every student that comes in late and tell them, you know, what happened in the first class. So sorry, if you stay out of this line of fire, you won't be videotaped. Um, you know, just to prove we are recording, this is BME 382. No. Um, but, um, this is, uh, to me, a very important class uh, sandwiched in the design spine for you guys because this is really your last stop, hopefully, before you hit capstone. And I've been, if you're already in capstone, I'm going to pick on you a lot uh, because we're in one semester going to do what you guys do in capstone over the, sp the span of two semesters. Uh, we'll go further, in fact. So the onus is I'm not really going to grade you. I actually have people coming in from industry at the end of the semester who are going to review your products. And they actually give me a thumbs up or down. Um, so you guys are actually going to get uh, validated. So that's something that usually doesn't happen in Capstone. I'll verify you did a good project as your advisor or as a professor, but I'm not a validator. I'm not a user. Uh, certain things, yes, but um, I'm going to be you know, relying on their expertise to say whether or not you actually made a good product. The people that will come and review you are actually people from IBM, Medtronic, GE Healthcare, uh, Corning, Stryker, Bar, WL Gore, Banner Health Systems, uh, maybe Grindhouse Games, uh, maybe Game Depot, uh, maybe uh, Gamlin Games. Uh, there's some gaming people mixed in with some BME people mixed in with some healthcare people. You're going to have a hard audience to please. It's awesome. Uh, you, you'll feel a little bit of sweat, um, but that's actually a lot of what we're doing here is going to be like Capstone. I just wanted to make it worse. Um, you, you'll be um, in you know, small teams of five. It's going to be like a small company. And it, we're going to have some training sessions in here. So you'll, this will be one of the classes where you get to use the equipment. Um, instead of just get demoed it, you guys are actually going to use it. Um, however, in that thing, I'm doing something new. I'm actually going to have you guys operate like a big company. So you guys will actually walk out of ASU knowing what working for a small company versus working for a big company uh, feels like. I thought it was really important to bring in here for you guys to walk out of ASU with that knowledge. I've worked for both. I've worked for some really cool people and I've worked for assholes. Um, I'll actually tell you guys, don't work for assholes. It sucks. Um, but it, it, to see that difference between big and uh, small, it's, it's kind of, you have to experience sometimes to see what that really feels like. Um, I'm going to try and start off every class what we're doing today and I'll try and end every class what we're doing next week except for the last class because next week I'll be. Um, you guys actually I think are going to get lab safety training in 318 either this semester or next semester so ASU's policy on safety training is once per year. Hopefully you guys have had it in your sophomore year or junior year or whatever you are uh, previously. And if you're a transfer student and you haven't had safety training, just come see me after class and we can figure that out. Um, it's really important to me. I've worked in industry and I've seen people lose digits and other things. Uh, I really think it's important to have you guys walk out of ASU with some safety on your mind. Uh, you got, you're going to learn team dynamics. I'm going to look for problem children. Uh, I want to find teams that are ready to go self-combust. Uh, in senior year, we'll watch these seniors go nuclear. And it's usually like three type A's that you, know, you can't no offense, anyway. Uh, they, they can't be near each other, and they're so you know articulate and anal, and nobody actually you know wants to work with them. But they they think they'll team up, and what happens is the best of friends will fight, and it drives me nuts. Coming from industry, I've worked on teams where there have been assholes, not only the bosses but people I had to work with, and onboarding and offboarding of employees is a really big thing in industry. And I don't see any reason for you guys to struggle through a year or a semester working with people you don't want to work with. So I'm going to try and give you those skills, how to work with people, how to get out of difficult situations, how to go like this, uh, whatever it takes to survive uh, that. So if you're having any problems, I can't stress this enough, talk to me, okay? Or the TAs. Um, or just like, you know, put tape on someone's back, you know, question mark or I don't know. Uh, just let me know, okay? Um, I am going to spend probably this semester and maybe all of next year convincing you that this class actually applies to medical device design. If you guys have heard about what this class is about, you probably heard it's about zombies, gaming, uh, having fun, uh, about all that's true. Um, but on top of it, it's about product design and development. I want you to focus on the pathway of prototyping, not the product itself. So, but we're going to have fun too. 
Um, and I think we're also going to give you some homework today. So it's one of those classes. Right off the bat, we're hitting you. My goal there in the homeworks is that you guys are actually going to get this stuff done in class. You, I don't want you guys to have any take-home homework. Um, that being said, I have heard of teams that like do nothing but work on their game for the rest of their junior year. I don't want this to be that yeah, one credit class that consumes your whole life. I try to really make this fit in your schedule. Um, I'm me. If you don't know me, get used to me. Um, our office hours are going to be before classes. So, uh, you know, the UGTAs and uh, our, myself will be here before class. Um, we're available after classes if you just send us an email or whatever. Um, everybody that's around the room, uh, whoever's a TA or UGTA, will probably have you pop up. Why don't you start, Joseph, your name? And did you take this class? Did you survive it? I did. I gave you a B, right? Ago. Yeah. A plus. Oh, I did. Oh, wow. Okay, we had one. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys in the back. <laughs> yeah. Well, who are you and what do you do? Okay. I'm Brian. I'm Garrett. All right. Thanks, guys. You guys took it uh, last semester and then a year before? Yeah. Okay. So we got a few different semesters and years already. I'm Blake. I took this a year ago. I paid for it last semester. Nicole's packing a weapon, so watch out, don't piss her off. Yeah. She's got a crutch. crutch. <laughs> um, I took this class last semester too, and this is my first day. I'm the TA for the class, I've never taken this before. PhD student, so I can't convince you of anything. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, so, yeah, so we really are going to be focusing on prototyping and, and building. Um, you know, that is what I really want to focus on, and that's why I picked board games. Um, a lot, I'll, I'll tell you about the synergies between that and a pacemaker in a little bit. Um, and uh, we will have more lectures. We'll actually have some external people come in and give lectures too. I'm going to try and keep that down to a minimum so there's actually more time in the classroom for you guys to actually build something. Um, at the end of it, uh, you guys are actually going to be um, kind of pitching your product. It's going to be, you know, be ready to give a one to five minute pitch on your product. What we do is we set up the room in a big like circle and you guys sit behind the counters and basically try to, you know, sell your wares. And uh, the reviewers will come around and grade you based on, you know, metrics they find uh, important. And uh, we'll actually do some practice ones of these. This is something we found out from last year. Some good feedback was, could we actually have some dry runs of this so we know what to expect. So we'll do that for you guys so you kind of you know, know what to expect. Um, grading policies there, um, yeah. The uh, quality control thing, that's uh, something new I'm adding to the class in the uh, training session. That's where you're going to actually feel like a big company. So, um, but other than that, yeah, most of this, it's all in your hands. Yeah. I hope to try and make the DTs their design task. This is what you guys will be doing in Capstone. So the format of these things is looking exactly the same as what Capstone should look like. Um, it's try to get you guys used to uh, you know, those assignments and what's being requested in them. Um, absentees, I really don't care. Uh, you know, if you're not going to be here, you know, let us know. But more importantly, let your team know. You, know, you guys have to work together. And uh, if someone's you know, ditching you know, a day for MCAT, GRE, I, I'm a little bit too hungover still from waking up at the crack of noon. You know, whatever it is, talk to your team because ultimately these are the people you have to work with. And if they're not happy about it, I'm going to hear it. Um, and I have some really choice projects left you know, from previous years to have you guys work on if you're a solo bastard that nobody wants to work with. Um, and if there's anything else that pops up, you know, um, you know, any type of thing, just let me know, though. Um, we have BMES this semester. I don't know. Is anyone going to BMES? Okay, we'll all be partying in my room. We're going to be watching zombie movies uh, about every night. Uh, come on by. Uh, everyone else, I'm sorry, you're going to be here working. Um, but uh, we'll try and figure that out too. If it's a whole team that disappears, that would kind of be weird, but we'll figure that out. Um, classroom behavior, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm on the attack, uh, Academic Integrity Policy Committee. We kick out people for cheating. Really hard to cheat in this class. Uh, if you're not pulling your weight, I'm going to hear about it. Um, if one team makes the exact same copy of a game as another team made, it's kind of obvious, so I don't have to worry about this too much. Uh, but not showing up is, is an issue I want to know about too. That's not really cool. You guys are taking a class, I'm going to assign you a grade, and I want to make sure you guys are working and learning. All this is really in prep for Capstone. I'm just trying to get you guys better prepared for Capstone. I've done 200 Capstone projects, 
and I know what makes it or breaks it in Capstone. I taught it for a couple of years. Um, I TA'd for her when I was uh, a little bit younger and had a little bit of black hair. Um, as a biomedical engineer, I've been very involved with Capstone. Back when I was an EE, I also uh, did a lot of Capstone stuff. So I know about that process and the expectations there. So. Um, so now this is the weird, one of the weird things in this class. There's going to be a lot of those. Um, if you had done the online survey, thank you very much. I'm running an IRB in this class, and I'm very interested in engineering education. More importantly, I'm interested in am I doing a good job teaching you guys something useful? Uh, we can argue about that later at the end of the semester. But um, part of that is I have an IRB. That's an Institute Review Board reviewed my, my uh, idea. And the idea is to kind of metric you guys on your knowledge of prototyping, design skills, and uh, engineering principles in general. And uh, part of this is a self-reflection on a survey that you guys have to do. If you did it, thank you. If you haven't done it, we'll give you about five minutes. I mean, it doesn't take that long to do it, um, to do it right now if you have a computer with you. Um, just FYI, this is one of those classes you can bring a computer to. In fact, if we don't see them up, Sometimes there's somebody on your team not working. Uh, there's a lot of digital design in this class, a lot of writing and stuff that you'll have to do for rules. Um, you know, bring a computer if you got one. Um, so how many people have not done the survey just yet? Okay. 45 people, no, no, no. Uh, get a chance to do it. There's a second part of this. There's a design challenge that we'll give you. Um, and it's a quantitative uh, instructor reflection on what you guys knowledge current state of the uh, you know, basal data point is. So we're going to pass those out and we'll give you guys about 10 minutes to read this over, write up a solution and then turn that back into us. And I'll do that again to you at the end of the year. And um, also so you know too, I look at the evaluators when they come through. I have a rubric that they grade and uh, I look at those three pieces of data and um, I look at those three pieces of data every semester as well as every year we've been doing this, and I've been able to watch the rollout of our design spine. You guys have all had 182, 282, and all that. I've watched you guys take those classes by people not taking them. So I'm comparing this data set to see if our design spine is working too. So you guys may feel like guinea pigs. Yeah, you are. Uh, but we're trying to actually do things better for you and get you better prepared. If you don't think what we're doing is good, this is, you know, these are great times to tell us this, but um, this is the second time um, I'm going to disappear again besides BMES. Um, I'm going to Irvine, California where the National Academies of Engineers are and I'm presenting exactly what we're doing here. Um, it's the second time I've gone. Uh, Biomedical Engineering Society, I've given three talks now about what we do in this classroom. Uh, people are really, really watching it. I've presented it to about 20 different companies and they love what we're doing in this classroom. If you're not following the current trend, most engineering is moving away from hands-on labs in-person classrooms and what's going to happen eventually is the creativity in the classroom and in the engineer is going to drop down and the quality of the engineer coming out is going to be a little bit different. If you guys don't think much bioengineering or your faculty, we actually are the antithesis of uh, Fulton schools. You know, uh, we, uh, we really put you guys first. You know, your education is really important to us. So that's part of that process. If you don't want to be part of this IRB, no, uh, it's totally cool, don't do it, but uh, don't feel pressured. But I really want to have this feedback from the class. It really helps me. All right, guys? So uh, if you haven't done the survey, go ahead and start taking it. And while we're doing that, uh, while, or while you guys are doing that, we'll get the uh, design challenge out to everybody. So if you want to. This is the uh, schedule, and I apologize for the Wednesday, Friday thing, but that's reality. Um, one of the things we also did different this year is uh, kind of a best practices thing is down towards the end we're just doing open labs. This is going to be a little bit different. Um, if anyone's available and um, just trying to get out of the way, damn it. Um, if anyone wants to come here on a Friday morning class time, which is at 8.30 in the morning, um, we're going to do open lab. You'll be able to come in at either time, including the office hours, use the equipment. Towards the end there's like this rat race to get you know stuff built. Capstone does this. They pretty much have everyone line up in a line and you just sit here, like right behind here, and you wait to get to the equipment and he's held you there until about like March and you have until April 1st to build something and show it off to the world. So you have like about 12 days or something like that to build it. I think they call it March Madness. He expects people to be here 24 hours a day for like, you know, 12 days. Um, it may be the 12 days of pissmas or something, but it's, um, it's really this like painful time. We'll also do something a little bit differently here um, that we come into this area about 
whatever the hell that is, week six, seven, eight, or nine, if any team is actually really ready to start building stuff, um, we're going to let you go. Um, one or two teams, however many, are ready to actually really start building their gamma version of their product, can actually get going. Uh, it prevents us having a chokehold on the equipment. Um, you have to really prove it to us that you're ready for it. So we're going to go through the whole process of building an alpha prototype, which is like drawing crap on paper. I have a bar napkin from one guy that built the game uh, with a hand drawing on it. It had like an X and then a little arrow and I don't know what it meant, but to him, it was his alpha. Uh, we want to see good bona fide alpha from everybody. Then, we, then we'll let you guys move into a beta. Um, the people that are really ready will get, actually get to go first and you'll laser cut, 3D print, you know, whatever you need. Um, but um, this is kind of like the, uh, the flow that we're going to go. The quality control rotations, again, that's the, the big company feel in you guys using equipment. Um, what we're really going to be talking about is over here. This is what you're doing and this is, you know, hopefully pretty clear when things are assigned and due. Um, Steve is going to be helping with grading. He's also doing a practicum in the class as part of the PhD process. Is he's going to actually have to learn what it takes to be a teacher. <laughs> uh, but I'm still had oversight over everything. So you guys will have really two people looking at your shit. That's awesome. Um, sorry. Um, but um, this, um, I think we're going to do, uh, everything's turned in on Blackboard. And everything's due basically like at the end of class, you know, the next class. So you get like a week to do stuff. That'll give uh, Steve and I the weekend to kind of look it over, um, and then you'll get grades back the following, um, you know, class time. So we're going to try and keep a good flow at that going, so you're not waiting for feedback. And um, you know, if you guys have any problems, totally just talk to us. We're human. Um, we may not listen or care, but we're human. Um, we'll, no, we'll 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 work on anything you guys feel is uh, you know stuff we got to clarify. I will usually bring in old homeworks and show you stuff too, so there's no magic. Um, Quality control, I think I kind of covered it already. You guys are going to basically do something very unique in here too, besides working for a big company. Most, um, how many people here are pre-med? Because you're a little bit different. Okay, I mean, you know, nice way. Um, how many people are going on to grad school? Or planning on it. How many people want to go to industry and make a lot of money? Okay, you guys, um, and people that go to grad school too, at some point in your career, you'll have to deal with quality control and I kind of sort of realized we don't teach this at all. So we're going to do that in this class too. Um, you guys will actually have to do some quality control and we're going to actually quality control your quality control. So um, it's going to be a little bit different, but you guys will all be working in a big company and you'll build something together as like a big company, but at the same time you'll stop and then quality control each other's. So um, there'll be a nice little uh, three week rotation we do there. Um, your reading assignments. Anyone read this yet? Wow, okay, it's a good book. Um, actually, I have a lot of books over there. It's basically Know Thy Genre. Uh, if, you, if you do want to do a zombie game, that's awesome. Uh, if not, you don't have to. But this is going back to an engineering design, knowing what the user wants. You've got to know a lot about what the user needs are. Um, is it a nurse practitioner? Is it a doctor? Is it a primary care physician? Is it the uh, specialist, like a cardiologist, that you're trying to make a product for? If you don't know the customer, you're not going to make something they need or want. Um, many, many fields of engineering fail at this. Uh, I came out of electrical engineering and most of the stuff we ever built was shit. No one would use it, no one would care about it, but it was really cool. I could you know, do stuff no one else could do. Nobody cares, no one buys it, then you're wasting your time and your company's time. One good thing about bioengineering I found is we're kind of like Rosetta Stones. We know what doctors talk about, we know what you know, engineers can do, and we can actually communicate really good between the two groups. Um, I find it very you know, refreshing to you know, be in a field where we actually build stuff that people want. Um, you don't have to buy the book. It's just actually it's really fun to read. Um, there are some other books, and I have a, a stack of them over here um, about how to build a game, how to develop something. It's really funny. If you take game and zombies out of it, I, in my world, I can literally see it being a medical device like a pacemaker or anything else. It really comes down to you, what you guys are doing here is prototyping for product design. Um, I'm still going to try and work on that. Um, so the game concept that I'm going to ask you guys to come up with, this is your user need. You guys will kind of like, you know, make it a farce. What do you guys want to build? Is it maybe a game that we have one of these going on right now, uh, teaches how to triage Ebola patients. Uh, so we have a group that's working with Banner Health Systems and they're trying to teach doctors and nurses how to triage patients um, that may or may not have Ebola. 
And in the, in the game, they actually triage so many patients, and then as more people come in and work with them, they can actually triage more people. So they're actually teaching nurses and doctors how to uh, work on a team, which is huge in the hospital care system. So they got two things going on in their game, which is really cool. Um, then I had some friends at the CDC tell us, like, what are things that go wrong usually? And uh, those are the little sidewinders that get into the game mechanics and make it fun. Uh, or disgusting. Uh, we have another group doing this game called 7110, which is teaching people, doctors, uh, patients, uh, friends, what is diabetes all about. Uh, and that's being done with Mayo Clinic. So you guys could actually get into some really cool games, uh, maybe actually hang out with some docs if you're pre-med. You might want to do that. Um, you know, you might find yourself working with a clinical doctor. I got a lot of them I can pull in. And, um, you know, you guys might make yourselves uh, a good connection. Um, or you can do something with zombies, which is really cool. I'm fine with that. Um, or you can teach about engineering. Maybe you want to teach people about bioengineering. Whatever you want. This is something where I'm going to give you guys a lot of freedom. Um, and uh, it really comes down to, you know, we're going to make maybe not a gamma version in here. It's not going to be something that's mass produced in China, which is the favorite place right now to go. Um, you know, so that's not going to be really, really gamma. It's kind of like a really pretty beta or a really crappy looking gamma. Um, one of those ways. So, you know, this you can take with a uh, grain of salt. The real thing is, is, you know, maybe you're going to identify some specifications that are important to you. Uh, is it fun, engaging, educational? Maybe is it low cost, uh, small, pocket sized? Does it teach something to somebody that you think is really valuable? Um, you're going to have standards. Uh, you guys, how many people are in Capstone right now? So I saw a lot of seniors. Okay. So if you guys started talking about uh, standards, ASTM, ISO, ANSI, um, I'll, 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 I'll show you now. I, ISO 216 and then ISO, what is it, like 5286? If you look them up, they're like playing card standards. This industry uses standards that are the same classifications we use in medical devices. Um, we have in, um, in the uh, FDA waterfall, it's uh, design inputs. You know, you guys may have things that you have to think about that are input uh, design driven. Uh, we have uh, writing. We don't have a PDR in here. You, got, you guys haven't given that spiel yet, have you? That five inch white binder that you got to fill up in the first semester in Capstone. Uh, we're going to be a little bit thinner. Actually, I'm the opposite of Capstone. I love rule, you know, rule sets that are like three pages long, clear, concise, and I can understand them. Very small words. I really appreciate that. Um, we want to try and get into some validation and you know you can actually do some internal validation at some point in the semester if one team can play another team's game it's very beneficial before those validators come in from the outside world um, you get some real good feedback Dr. Corson who I've now got trained up to teach this class in the spring has a wonderful question that he asks everybody if you got a team of five people five, out of five people how many people would buy that game or play it and it's amazing how honest some people are um, think about that as you're making your game and, you know, verification and whatnot. Um, that's the FDA side of things. There's going to be a lot of things that are a lot of synergistic uh, with the uh, uh, capstone design. We don't have patents in the gaming world, there, but there are copyrights is a very important term. You'll get that in capstone. Um, the machines that we use uh, in uh, medical device design, laser cutting, 3D printing, CNC engineering, uh, all these types of things that you'll be doing in, in Capstone is actually used in the gaming world. Um, tech group here locally and, um, uh, gosh, I uh, Flambeau. There are two different injection molding companies here. Flambeau, off the top of my head, I remember the owner bought Dunkin' Yo-Yo, and they have some gaming stuff that they do for different industries. They actually, on one part of their line, run medical devices like little Eppendorf tubes, and on the other side of their line, they're making gaming stuff. Um, the industry looks for money wherever it comes from. So there's a lot of synergy, and I'll try and convince you over the year that you know the, the budgeting and the uh, business formation, same thing as running a small business in biomed space. Gaming world has to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to bore you to death with this thing. This is your countdown clock. Uh, you're going to see this every class probably a couple of times. And as we go through it, whoop, there's the FDA waterfall. I was throwing some stuff out. Um, this is the big thing you don't do in Capstone too much. Um, you want to do a lot of this before you get there. Um, prototyping has its own pathway. If you haven't noticed, a lot of it is all about iteration. Um, don't be afraid. Now I'll throw a little bit of fear out there. We had a team that built their game, Gamma. I mean, a really nice game by week six. Um, it was kind of cool. I was like, hey, we got some asynchronous building. What they didn't tell us was they never played the game. And I asked them that question, and they said, oh, no, no, but we'll, we'll do it today. 
And week seven, I came back, and all the shit was missing. Every little piece was there, except for one, which really annoyed me, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, I kind of went over to them and said, what's going on? And they're like, our game sucks. It is so boring. It's lame. We threw out everything except this. And I, I was now concerned. They had some sort of element that they built or 3D printed, and they loved so much that this stupid little thing went into the next game and made their next game suck ass. And then it went into the next game when they modified it. You know, don't get hung up on one design parameter. Um, that happens in, in the medical industry. I was talking to a guy in San Diego. He owns um, like a $10 billion company or something like that. And he was, he was complaining that we do this in engineering design sometimes. You get hung on something, don't. Beta, uh, alphas and betas are pieces of paper that you draw on because you're not fixed on something yet. You want to really be at that point and like everything in there, then go to the next stage and spend a lot of time building something. Capstone is rife with people that will build the final product the first day of class and it'll just suck ass. It will not be 10 times faster. It will not be 100 times cheaper. My nano product, it's, it's nanoscale, it's so small it'll fit anywhere, um, is so durable, don't touch it, it's going to break. Um, it happens every time. I'm guilty of it. I, um, I just spent six years about apprenticing as a blacksmith and I'm doing things like that, my woodworking. I'm going backwards and le relearning prototyping because I'll spend less time prototyping and then building the final thing that works versus trying to build that, first, that final thing first. Um, we're all guilty of it. We all want to see that final thing and make it look pretty, but in reality there's a lot of testing you got to do before you get there. Um, so the schedule, you know, right now what we're going to do in a little bit, hold still, uh, is form teams and then you guys actually just like medical devices, they're state of the art. In the gaming world, they're state of the art. I got a whole buttload of games for us to look at. Uh, you can do competitive benchmarking, which is neat ways of looking at specifications from one type of game to another. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have some fun playing in a, in a little bit. Um, we, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Um, one of the things I want to go over really quickly is teams and team roles. Uh, skills, which is really important. Uh, how to evaluate soda. You guys mostly are seniors, but we'll, we'll do some of that too. And then gameplay. Um, evaluating soda, you know, doing a competitive benchmark, if you haven't done one yet, you want to look at like three different games, and these are over there. The cost is very different between these things. Um, there's uh, different characteristics. These people went to different blue oceans in different markets, basically, and try to isolate some niche that they said that we really do. Uh, maybe I'm cheap and it's small and there's lots of uh, replayability. Maybe I'm very expensive but I got some really cool things inside. The content's high quality. Uh, people are going to want to keep this on, on their um, you know, shelves forever. These people target the market that you know, pretty much will throw $20 at anything nowadays. A couple of beers and a sandwich or something like that. You know, 20 bucks doesn't go really far. So they, uh, there's a whole bunch of people that uh, target that market. Then there's people that try and fit in between. And if you go through these things, you can actually pick off a few different specifications that uh, will be, um, you know, neat. Uh, sometimes these are better on rules, though. Uh, this, this one right here, if you play this game, it'll take you three minutes to actually read the rules and get the game going. This one, there, I, I would actually really tell you guys right now, go watch the YouTube video. It's 44 minutes long. If you, add, if you actually read the rules, it takes about 45 minutes to read the rules. I don't know crap after I read the rules, but I watched the video and I understood how to play. Um, so, um, we're going to have a show of hands in a s soon. Uh, that's a little reminder for me. Uh, we have five roles. This comes from soliciting about 20 different game developers I know and game producers. And I tried to isolate a team of five. What are the five most critical aspects of a small company or uh, gaming company? And this is what we kind of come up with. Uh, this is the bullshit artist, uh, yeah, the uh, creative director. Uh, this has uh, got some uh, specifications that, you know, you got to have a, a really creative person on your team take this role, or you have to have a willingness to want to learn a lot about that. Ob observing and learning and playing a lot of games, looking at a lot of different things. Uh, operation and business director might be someone that may have a minor in business or someone that just likes money. Um, art, digital designer, this is someone that can actually do it. Um, physical prototyping master. Uh, you know, building it. Someone's got to be able to really build it. Game designer, if anyone has any inclining towards creative writing or writing in general, we're all engineers. Um, you, guys don't, you guys will see my emails. They'll make no sense whatsoever. Uh, my students in my lab call it what, uh, Steve? My, my uh, Japanese is what we call it in the lab. Or Chi's here. Hey, Chi. Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. Um, you know, I'm an engineer. I write like crap. Um, get help. Um, 
So anyways, so really quick, like off the top of like show of hands, just hold your hand up. And when, when people hold their hand up, I want you guys to look at them. Don't look at your friends and say, there's my team. How many people here have a, are in a business minor, have done a business degree, are interested, ran a small company, dealt with money, like touching money? Okay, so we got a couple of people. Um, raise your hands high, be proud of it. You like money, it's okay. It's not evil. We're capitalists, come on, screw everybody. Okay, um, how many people here have a dad or mom or have taken a shop class, uh, built something, threw a hammer at a nail? Um, okay, you guys, are getting rarer and rarer every year, which is kind of scary. So, you know, be proud of that. Build shit is what we're, we're engineers. It's kind of hard to design something if you've never built it. Um, anyone here really good with Photoshop or editing, digital design, uh, SolidWorks even, if you've used SolidWorks? Um, you know, if you have that inkling towards that, you're, you're going to be uh, wanted. Um, let's see, game design. Oh, anyone here like writing? Wow, cool. Awesome, that's usually like, that, that thing about picking on people writing, you guys are cool. Um, you know, that's actually nice. Uh, usually we have like one person and they're like the most sought after uh, teammate. Uh, anyone like to be a bullshit artist? I mean a uh, creative director? Uh, okay, being in charge is actually the worst place to be. Um, you actually gotta fill in the role for anything missing. Um, there, there's always, in this class, there's gonna be a lot of uh, prototyping and so you guys, it's not like you come in here and I don't have anything to do today, I'm gonna to sit on my ass and do nothing. You guys are gonna to have to get everyone motivated. You know, you're kinda of like a cheerleader and keep people moving and going. You guys have to do that for yourselves too. If you feel like you're sitting around not doing anything this week because there's no prototyping, probably talk to the game designer or somebody else and see if they need a hand. Uh, towards the end, you are gonna be rewarded by people helping you out because the prototyping at the end starts to ramp up. The uh, creative, uh, the art and uh, digital designing starts to ramp up and you really need to call in on your teammates for help. Uh, at the end, everyone's so busy, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, this is kind of the roles that we have, so we're kind of forcing teams of five. Um, if there's more people, we shoot them. Um, so um, if there's less people, we'll bring in some bodies from last year. Um, so anyway, so um, if you have an interest to learn any of those things, it's a classroom, you're gonna be here to learn, don't worry. Uh, you just may not get as good of a grade. Now, um, you'll be fine. Um, you know, we have TAs here that have done this before, so you have a lot of people to ask uh, if you want to learn about the business and the financial side. Everything I just said in there, all those five roles, are things that you're going to have to do in Capstone anyways, so it doesn't hurt to actually learn these skills if they're new to you. What I don't want to see, and this is why I say it, we had three type A's a couple of years ago get together to be one of the most sought after senior team and every single one of these persons had the same skills, but they're really good friends. Uh, they, didn't, they had a little minor nuclear attack and one of them disappeared. Uh, but the two remaining people, you know, it was like, you know, alpha and beta, they're the same thing. And if you went down their skills, they had zero to do with electronics. And guess what their number one problem was in their capstone project? Mechanics, no, no, it was electronics. And they just fumbled the whole year through their senior project, argued and, and just, just, you know, did a lot of that first job bullshitting. And by the time they defended, two really, really good students that we thought the world of did a really shitty job in Capstone. And uh, we felt really bad for them because they didn't really learn anything because they struggled over something that just wasn't a skill of theirs. It's okay not to you know, have a skill in a certain area. Bioengineering is so diverse of a field, I think anyone could find a home in it. Just fess up and talk to your team and make sure you pick the right team and not just your friends. If you guys get along, that's awesome too. But if not, it's a chance to you know, get into test some different waters. When you get into senior year in Capstone, you know, I'll shit you not, someone's gonna have to build it, someone's gonna have to do some CAD, someone's gonna be able to do the financials, someone's gotta be able to run experiments. Um, you guys are gonna be doing this all over again, so it's not a bad time to test the waters now. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, brainstorming, this is huge. Spend more time doing this. When you guys are doing your alpha, really talk about brainstorming and think about what, what you can attack. Same thing will happen in Capstone. You guys may fall on a project just because one person has a, a topic. You may know that they, it's just something they thought was cool. You know, talk to people, find out as much as you can, brainstorm. Um, alternative design, I'm gonna stress this a lot and we'll give you some good examples finally. Um, out of 200 senior projects, I'll give you the average of about 198 of them. This is my really cool product. It does everything, you know, blue ocean diagram. I'm way out there. No one's even near me. You want me to talk about uh, an alternative design? Well, if I take this out, it's a piece of shit. That's my alternative design. 
Um, there's no fallback for that team. Everyone does it. We take away one good thing and makes it a piece of junk and we call it alternative design. Um, when you're in your senior year and you do that moonshot and you try and make your final product first and it completely fails, you have no backup plan. It's actually really bad. It's actually better to have alphas and betas that you've tested along the way, gather some data off of. But if you don't even have that, have a solid, real backup plan. And I don't mean like a completely different topic with a different mentor or anything like that. Talk about it. What are things that we could do differently? If I was going to have a mechanical transducer, what if I had an optical one? You know, is there an alternative that I could do that would save my butt? Um, ultimately, I'm worried about you guys graduating. So, um, so what we'll do in a, a little bit is we're going to have everybody more or less do this: get into teams. Um, we'll take some time doing that. Um, you can select a board game, get four people, and just go play a game and have fun. Talk to them, get to know them. Uh, don't play the whole game because some of these games will literally take you hours. Zombie Side, if you've never played it before, has anyone played Zombie Side? Yes, we got some big ass. In it. <laughs> it's like, it's. Um, I once played with my brother-in-laws and uh, the wives and some other people, and we made a board that was like about this big because there's so much crap in it. So we made this board this big, and we literally went about two feet, and it took eight hours of gameplay. Um, it was the longest night of our lives, and we all regretted it the next morning. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was just stupid. Uh, don't play that long. What we want you to do is test the waters on some of the games and look at the rule books. Start pulling some specifications out of these games and look at what's important. Some of these things have age, time to play, number of players right on the box. Just observe it and, and see what's inside of it. And chit chat with other people. If you don't know everybody in the room and you saw some hands going up, I like business, I like uh, building stuff, I like writing, you might want to approach those people too and get to know someone else. Um, and then, um, you know, in the homework, you guys, uh, Joseph, where are you? Blackboard. It's on Blackboard already? Yes, the first design task is on Blackboard. So get a teammate that's got a computer. Um, I actually have it here, so if you want to see it. Um, next class, we'll be going over some, uh, some more about needs analysis for the people that haven't had it. Uh, some of these uh, activities will be playing again. But now we want you to start thinking about what's going to be your unique game that you're going to make. And um, you know, I'll try and give you actual application to medical devices. I'm going to, I, I tell you, I'm going to keep BSing you guys that there's no difference. Um, and then DT1 is actually due at the end of next class. Okay. Safety training, yeah, let me know. These are the ones that you should have, lab safety, fire safety, you know, stuff like that. If you don't have that, if you're taking 318 next semester, you will have it, so don't worry about it. If you are not taking 318 next semester, or did, I don't know, you should have it by now. So um, anyway, oops, that's next week. All right, cool, any questions, comments, concerns, salutations? Prostrations, gastrations? I don't know. Okay. All right. Um, mingle. Uh, and then go grab some games. We've got a whole bunch of them over there. Um, one of your state of the arts is going to be this game called Incursion. They're, it's made by a couple of buddies of mine. And it's really cool. It's Nazi zombies. Enough said. I mean, uh, but it's got some good content in it. So there's only a couple of copies of it, though.